nervous. I don't know why, but I am. If I put more in the night, I trust and I got that door right now. But I love my Lord a whole lot more than me running for my life right now than run for him. But Amen. thanks be to God. Let's bow our heads for a little moment to pray after we go. Lord, I thank you for bringing us together right now. I'm going to come to you, Lord God, as I'm going to know how, Lord God. I ask the Lord to decrease me, Lord God, and let you increase, Lord God. Let your word come forth, Lord God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. 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 I don't know how this is going to come out. I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> I had a topic all prepared, had my notes, had my definitions, and I mean, had it all laid out. And on Sunday, the Lord gave me another word. And I'm like, oh, Lord, okay. Do what you say. I'm going to go with God. I'm like, okay. Let's turn to Acts chapter 9, if you will. I'm going to try not to leave before you long. But like I said, what comes up comes out. Acts chapter 9, we're going to start at verse 1. Just a few little scriptures. And it says, And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest, and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they be they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. And suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the bricks. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing a man, no man. I'll read that again. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. I'm going to go back to verse 5, and I'm going to hang my hat when my topic going to come out. And he said, who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Yeah. And that's my topic tonight. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Okay? When you think of a prick, what do you think about? What do you think that is? Like just a little, little jab, a little something, you know, a little, little sting. Something to say, you know, maybe ouch to some people or whatever, but... Or if you go into the doctor, you get a little shot, they do a little little prick or a little, little prick on your finger to get the little blood sugar or whatever. That's a little prick. But according to the Bible times, a prick, what they call it an ox goad. And it was a long stick with a sharp point on the end that farmers would use to steer their animals in the right direction when they're plowing a field or whatever. So if the farmer that wanted to go a certain way, they take this little ox goat and they prick them yeah. or whatever, okay? And the saying comes from Harvey to kick against the prick because when the farmer would prick the oxen, he would rebel or he would kick at him. Yeah. So that's called kicking against the prick. Amen. But okay, the farmer would do that to make him do a certain thing and make him go a certain way. But it only resulted, resulted in more pain for the oxen right. because the more the oxen rebelled, the more the farmer would prick. And that's what saints are doing today. When you're sitting there, when you're being in rebellion against the house of God, being against the Lord or whatever, you're going against the prick. You're going against Jesus. You're going to make it hard for yourself. The more you stay out of disobedience, the more you stay out into the world, the more you stay in sin, you're going against the prick and making it hard for yourself. Amen. Not for God. You make it hard for yourself. Amen. When your things ain't going right, when, you, when your money gets a little funny, when your, when your spouse want to act up, when your people on your job want to act up, you ever think, hey, you know, Lord, Lord what's, you ever stop and say, Lord, what's going on? That's right. You ever stop and say, Lord, what's going on? What's happening? Amen. You think maybe, maybe you're kicking against the prick in some area in your, in your walk? Jesus. Amen. Maybe. Amen. Maybe. Amen. Maybe. That's the big case. Could be. Maybe you're not praying as much as you used to. 
to. Maybe I push the plate back as much as used to. Maybe I'm reading your Bible. Maybe I'm doing the outreach like the Lord told you to do. Maybe you, I don't know what the area may be, but it's always something that you're kicking against the creek in. I'm not saying that a Christian's life is always going to be peaches and cream, going to be bed of roses. I'm not saying that. But every once in a while, there's always a way to come up higher. Yeah. You got to come up higher yeah. each yeah. time. There's a way to do that. But you would constantly kick against that prick that you only make it hard for yourself alone when you stay out there. Yeah. All right. Now, I want to give you a little history on Paul. His name was Saul before they called him Paul, before his conversion. Now, he was prominent. He was the most prominent of the apostles. We all do him started in many churches, but his primary attribute was his upbringing. He had a um, a very uh, elite education. He was taught by Gamaliel. He was uh, had dual citizenship throughout the, the nations. But the thing that he had that, that the Lord would, um, I would say, focus in on him was he had a zeal about him. He had a passion. Now, yes, that passion was killing the Christians or whatever. Yes, that was. But he had a zeal about himself. He would, he would go forth no matter what. He would do it all his might. Even though it was bad, but you think about this. He did that with all his might, with yeah. all his strength, all his heart. He loved killing the saints. He loved doing that. Yeah. He had a zeal about himself. But the Lord would want him to steer him a different way. Yeah. The Lord wanted him to steer him a different way. Steer him toward not killing the Christians, but raising them up. Yeah. Okay? That's what the Lord wanted him to do. But he, that he would go so far as to go to the high priest now. That was bold. Go to the high priest to ask for papers to go find him up this way yes. and then go kill him? Yes. That was bold. Yes. He didn't care. But he had a zeal about him. But the Lord was going to take that zeal was going to turn it for the good. Yes. Okay? He was one of the first of modern Christians to direct havoc in the Jerusalem. Now remember, it was Stephen's clothes that was laid down at Paul's feet. He was doing so much wrong in his mind, his actions, to he got to a point where he, he was thinking he was doing right. Mm -hmm. That's how the devil can have you. You can be doing wrong for so long. And you can be going out there in left field for so long, mm -hmm. and you think you're right. And that's how the devil wants, wants the nation, wants the people to think these days, that they're doing right. Look at everything that has been torn down, that all the foundations have been built up for years. Look at that foundation of marriage. They have redefined marriage. Yeah. They have redefined the household. Right. I grew up in a two-parent household. When I say two-parent, I mean a mom and a dad. Yeah. Now you got two, a mom and a dad. You may have a mom in a home or a dad in a home. Or now you got two dads, two moms. Or what. I'm like, what is going on? Yeah. So the foundation of the family is being torn down. Yeah. That's right. But it's wrecking havoc on everybody. That's not how it was not ordained to be that way. Right. It wasn't ordained to be that way. Amen. But it was the wrong thing to do. Marriage. That foundation has been torn down. Mm -hmm. The divorce rate is extremely high in the nation. Mm -hmm. Even that among Christians? Right. Why? We pricking we're kicking against the brick. Come on. It's time to stop that. And just do what the Lord told us to do and be done with it. And you, it will reap you many, many blessings if you do. And less heartache. Preachers. You hear you see these sermons on, on television or whatever, and they so watered down to you really get down to it. It's just a motivational speech. Mm -hmm. It's not telling people to come out of sin. There's no deliverance. There's no freedom. There's nothing. There's no repentance. Mm -hmm. There's no remission of sins. There's no none of that. It's just, oh, they pat me on the back to, oh, you're doing good. The Lord, he loves you. He know your heart. No. It's, it's more to it than that. You got to come out of your sin. That's right. You don't hear that anymore. You don't tell him. People tell him, come out of that sin. Stop doing the wrong thing. Yes. Come out of the club. Stop drinking the alcohol. Stop smoking the cigarettes and everything else. If you're not, he don't hear that anymore. But you get motivational speech. You're doing a good job. Yes. Good job. Keep going. Yes. God loves you. You're doing right. Yes. But you're going right on hell. Yes. And don't even know it. Or oh, some people you may know it. They don't show care. Yes. But that's on them. On but God said it is hard for them to kick against the pricks. Yeah. Now, God, he was going to steer Paul in the right direction. So he told him to go to the prophet's house and he was going to, I think it was Ananias, mm -hmm. and he was going to pray for him, he was going to get his vision back. But he was three days without vision, three days in the dark. Yeah. Three days, y'all. Can you imagine being without vision for three days? Three days. Mm -hmm. 
three days you couldn't see, couldn't do nothing. You got to be led around yeah. by somebody or something. Yeah. Three days you in the dark, all because of disobedience. Mm -hmm. Now, three days may not be you being in the dark. You could be three days without your lights, three days without pay, three days on suspension, three days on right. something, three days of what? The, right. The hard days. Days or whatever. Three days could be anything these days right now. I mean, it's, it's hard these days to go three days without getting paid or something like that. So they can't afford this one day for a pay or whatever. But that's what three days is, okay? Three to thoughtless. Okay, when we choose to disobey God, we become like the rebellious ox. Driving the gold even deeper and deeper into us. That's how we are as saints. Now, I'm talking to just the house of the church tonight. I ain't talking to the Come on. They don't, they don't, they out there, they doing what they want to do. Right. I'm talking to the house tonight. You may wonder why the blessings that was prophesied to you some time ago has not come to fruition yet. Mm -hmm. The home, the house that you was promised hasn't been, hasn't come through yet. Your spouse is not, your spouse ain't safe. Now, I'm preaching to myself too now, okay? Your spouse ain't safe. You wonder why those things have not come to fruition. Because maybe it's someone you kick it against the prick. You, got, you haven't got the new job yet. You ain't got the new car. You ain't got the raise. Your health is failing or whatever. You're kicking against the prick. Stop kicking against the prick. It's only making it hard for yourself. By resisting God's authority, we are only punishing ourselves. We're hurting nobody but ourselves. Nobody but ourselves. If you don't believe me, I'll tell you about a man who was hurting nobody but himself when God told him a simple task to do. A simple task. Let's go to Jonah. Hello. Uh, chapter one, John. Yeah. Sister John, would you read it for me, please? John Start. Uh -huh. one, yes, Let's go down to verse three. John chapter one and verse one. It says, "Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh." that great city and cry against it for their wickedness is come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Now he had a simple task to do. The Lord told him to arise, go to Nineveh, and cry out to them against it. Because their wickedness had come up to God. Yeah. And he was going to punish the city. Mm -hmm. Simple task. Simple. Just go there, preach the word. If they heard it, fine. If they didn't, it was on them. Yeah. The blood, he was, he was going to be clean with the blood of God. It was not going to be on his hands. Mm -hmm. But what did he do? He ran. Yeah. Ran and then... From the presence of God, then he went to pay the fare to go even further to get a, a boat to go to Tarshish. Well, the Lord told him not to go. He told him to go to Nineveh. Yes. But what happens? If you know the story, let's go to chapter 2. And then, uh huh. And read down to verse 10 for me. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly and said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord. And he heard me out of the belly of hell. Cried I, and thou heardest my voice. For thou hast cast me into the deep, in the midst of the seas, and the floods compassed me about. All the billows and thy waves passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight, yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. The waters can pass me about, even to the soul. The depth closed me round about. The weeds were wrapped about my head. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption. O oh Lord, my God, when my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. And my prayer came in unto thee, into thine holy temple. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. And the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. 
Now, Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights because of disobedience. Three days and three nights in the belly of a fish. He said the sea weeds was wrapped around, the weeds wrapped around his head. He went through the mountains, went through the caves and the bars thereof, all because of disobedience. Because he didn't want to go cry out to one little, little old city and tell them about their sins. A simple task to do. He didn't tell them to go in and raise the dead. He told them to go and cry to the city. Go preach the word. That was all he had to do. But no, he ran the opposite way and then ended up getting swallowed up by a fish for three days and three nights. Now, can you imagine being in a belly of a fish for three days and three nights? That stinking mess. Fish stinks all by itself, but you in the belly of one for three days and three nights. All the fluids that's all around you, anything that the fish ate is going right down there with you. And you got to sit back. You can't do nothing but sit down. Three days and three nights because of your disobedience. So how long do you want to be in the belly fish tonight? Yeah. How long do you want to be in your extended stay hotel when you want to, so you can come on out and do good. Repent and come on up higher. Do what the Lord told you to do so you can come out of your extended stay of things. Yeah. Come on up higher when the, the way the Lord wants you to do. Start doing what the Lord tells you to do so you can come up higher and do what he tells you to do. And then you can be what he, what he wants you to be. The way he wants you to be. The Christian woman he wants you to be. The woman he wants you to be. The man he wants you to be. So how long do you want to stay there? Some people like to get a thing they want to be comfortable. Mm -hmm. I don't like being comfortable in mess. My mama always told me when I was growing up, the more you stir in mess, the more it stinks. Mm -hmm. I can't stand it. If I find the littlest little thing, I'm like, Lord, search me, tell me. Because I don't want to stand before him over one little thing that may keep me out of here. One little spot, one little wrinkle, uh-uh. It ain't worth it. That's right. It's not worth it. And he was in there three days and three nights because of disobedience. And that, that's what the Lord did to him back then. Back then. Now he's the Lord more of a long suffering, and he's got a little more mercy and grace for us these days. Yeah. But at the same time, his patience is gonna wear out. With you. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna wear out. Yes, he's long suffering. He loves you, yeah. but he also he's still God. And judgment will come. Yeah. Will you be ready? Yeah. Will you be ready? Things don't always go the way we plan because life happens. And that just happens to everybody. Yeah. We all have experienced some form of struggle, but we all who are saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name, why are we kicking against the freak tonight? Yeah. Yeah. When Pastor Jones gives us a word to do, or if he gives us a word here, do we go back home and study that word like he preached on faith the other day? Mm -hmm. Have you gone back home and studied on that? He even told us to watch what the words you say. Watch what you say sometimes. Have you thought about that? Yeah. Have you thought about that? That's yeah, right. he, that's a, that was a command. Yes, you got to watch what you say. Right. Watch the thing you say over your children, over your marriage, or whatever. It was an odd one for me. Yeah. I had to watch what I say. Watch the things that I speak, or whatever. Yeah. I'm not going to kick against the prick anymore. Because I'm only bringing destruction to myself. So when we're doing that, we not really, we hurt, we think we're hurting people, but you don't hurt yourself. You ain't hurting God. You're hurting yourself. Now, turn to James 4. James chapter 4. And we're going to start at verse number 7. James chapter 4 and verse 7 says, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Now say that again now. That's it says, right. submit yourselves mm -hmm. unto God. To God. Mm -hmm. Okay, submit to God. That yes. means you yield to him. Yes. You go under him, you do what he tells you to do, right? That's yes. what that means. Submit to God. Submit to God. Submit to God. Yes. Okay, but why are we kicking against him? If he says, submit to, to me, why are we kicking against him? Yes. That's right. Why? Okay. Then what does it say? Resist the devil. Re so we gotta resist the devil. That's right. Resist the devil. Yes. Okay. And then what? And he will flee. He from will you. flee. He will flee from you. Yes. Now, that's real simple, right? Mm -hmm. But why we kick against the prison? 
The Lord tell you to fast, go on a three day, three night fast. Oh, I don't know about that. Now, go, I'm going to do this on another day. <laughs> I don't know about that now. Mm -mm. I plan on cooking this and cooking that right now. I don't know. Uh -uh. But you resisting God and you submit to the devil. Ain't that right? Oh, come on back. And am I right? That's correct. That's correct. But that's not what he told us to do. He said, submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. That's what that's that's easy. But we do the opposite. The Lord tell you, okay, I want you to read your Bible from cover to cover. I'm going to give you three months to do it. Oh, come on. Do you do it? No. <laughs> That's too much reading. As soon as you pick up the Bible, what you do? Them sleep disease, come on. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Uh -uh. Come on. Come on. Why? He says, Submit yourselves to God or resist the devil. What will we do? We kick it against the prick. The pastor gives the church a fast to do it. Do you do it? You may do it halfway and not all the way. You kick it against the prick. You kick it against the prick. You bring it home to yourself. You're hurting nobody but yourself. All right, continue. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Thank you, hold it right now. And just humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall he lift you up. Now the devil, he'll tell you, you bow down to me, I give you all this right here, I do that, I do this here for you, or whatever. Look at the Grammy show the other night. They had horns on the head, had on fire, had this sort of fire going out on the stage or whatever, They uh, and had just ungodly stuff. Yeah. And you praise that. People praise that. Oh, that was a good old thing. You're worshiping the devil. Oh, they're just being artistically, they're just showing their artistic, their vows or whatever. No! You devil worship. You devil worship. Don't do it. You're bringing more hardship to yourself. You're kicking against the prick. We wonder why COVID won't go away. We're kicking against the prick. We're kicking against the prick. That's right. Because it says in what? Second Chronicles at 714. It's my people who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then what? Then, heal heaven, then heal heal the land. Anybody done that? No. COVID's still bound. I had sent three, home, three employees home today test the positive for it. Three. It's not going anywhere. Because we won't repent. We won't turn from wicked ways. We become more wicked and more wicked day in, day out, every single day. And we wonder why things are going on the way they are. We're kicking against the prick. We're kicking against the prick. Do not submit to fear. You don't do it. Not to fear, not to the devil. But you got to stand against him with all your might. Don't kick against the prick. First Peter chapter five. Sit down and start at verse six for me, Sister John. First Peter chapter five. Mm -hmm. Verse six. Verse six. Mm -hmm. Go down to verse ten. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that He might exalt you in due time, casting all your cares upon Him. For he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. 
what is it? Verse 10. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. But the God of all grace, who have called unto us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after yeah. that you have suffered. Not before, he said after. 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 No, no, it's before. After. Before. After you suffer. Before, before you do anything wrong. Before. after. You, you can do all you want to do before, right? After. It's after. After. A F T E R. <laughs> okay. After, after. You suffer a while. Okay. After that you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and sell you. I don't want to suffer. That's right. I don't want to suffer. I don't want to go through that. I don't want to do that. But it says after you have suffered a while. Mm -hmm. But these sermons that you these days, ain't no, ain't no suffering in them. No. None at all. Yeah. But it's after you have suffered a while, he'll make you perfect. Yeah. Now, see, that don't make sense to me now. After you suffer, you've gone through and gone through and gone through and gone through and gone through. It's going to make you perfect? Wow. Mm -hmm. Establish you? Strengthen you? Mm -hmm. Sell you? Yeah. Really? Yeah. After you suffer a while. Yeah. After you have suffered a while. Okay. But don't kick against the prick while doing it. That's right. Don't kick against the prick while doing it. I don't want to stop, but I want to tell you a little story. And this is a little true story. So I grew up on a little farm in Monroe. And we had chickens. And I think my grandmother told me this story. There was this chicken, and they were outside, of course, minding their own little business, and all of a sudden a storm comes up. And the storm that took a, blew away one of the chickens. And storm goes, comes back, all right, gets peaceful, quiet, but then this, this little chicken that got blown away found his way back home. And so, he goes up to his chickens and those little, little, little crew there and everything and he pecking, trying to find some food and they looking around at him. And they said, man, what happened to you? Because his feathers was gone, he was all beat up, just looking all toe up. I mean, just looked like he had been through something. He said, man, I have been through a storm. They said, man, what happened? But got all your feathers gone. They said, man, you ain't nothing enough. He said, I know, I have been through a storm. I've been through a storm. Give me time. So as time goes on, he goes on, minds his own business or whatever. Next thing you know, his feathers start going back. Mm -hmm. So his feathers start going back, and then he start looking like himself. So one day the, the chicken said, man, you don't look like what you've been through. He said, yeah, I've been through a storm. But for time, for time, I don't look like what I've been through. How many of you don't look like what you've been through? How many don't look like what you've been through now? When you got saved, sanctified, you put a picture on Facebook from like 20 years ago of what you looked in and what you look now. Who don't look like what they did, what they've been through? I don't look like what I've been through now. Jesus don't look like what he's been through. He's been raised up from the dead. He paid a high price for your life. He paid too high a price for your life. He don't look like what he's been through. He was marred beyond recognition. Yeah. He don't look like what he's been through. Yeah. So how are many of you right now are kicking against the preacher? Jesus. Back in the hands of the pastor. Yeah. 